Hello and welcome to this special training, Content That Converts. This is especially for you if you're a coach or a consultant, a trainer, or anyone who's offering some type of transformational change and you want to attract more clients. So I want to start by painting a picture for you. Imagine that it's a few short weeks from now and you wake up and you get to your desk, get grab your phone, your computer, whatever it is, your working device, and you see straight away that you've had some inbound messages overnight. Messages from people saying, I'm interested in what you offer. I like the look of what you do. I'm interested in working with you. Tell me more. I want you to know that that potential can very much be your reality over the next 30 days when you apply what I'm talking about in this training. Now, for many people, this isn't your reality. And the reason for that is all comes down to how you're using free content. Because if you haven't had this up until now, there's some few key pieces that you've been missing and we're certainly missing. And I'm going to show you exactly what they are and how you can fix that inside of the next 30 days. Uh, because the bottom line is when you do it right, free content can be a powerful way to attract interest from potential buyers, generate leads, overcome objections, and even close sales for you. But if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> free content can be like a millstone around your neck that sucks up hours, days, weeks of your time, leaves you frustrated and maybe even resentful when you're putting in all this effort to creating value for people and it's not translating into results. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to watch part one of this training because last week I did another training where I talked all about why content is so important, why it's so important to have free content and um, the five key mistakes that people make with free content. And if you did see that, you'll know that a formula I shared right at the beginning is a way to make money in business is all about adding value. So the, the formula I gave was if you add more value to more people more often, you're going to make more money. And free content is about how we give value ahead of someone becoming a, a paying customer or client. So done the right way, it can make a massive difference. And today I want to talk to you about if you're committed to having a content marketing strategy that works in your business, what the seven steps are so this can really start working for you too. So I guess I should tell you a little bit about why I'm um, authorized to talk about this. Um, there's a very good chance you already know I'm Bernadette Doyle. You might not know that I've been using free content in my own business for 25 years, um, way before I was ever online, way before I heard about things such as lead magnets. And basically I was using free content back then. I was going out to networking groups and giving talks and inviting people to raise their hands at the end of the talk to get further information from me. I was writing for trade magazines and inviting people at the end of my articles to um, phone in uh, to request further information. And that was pretty much how I got my business going. And I, I created my first six figure business within two years and content marketing was a key, key part of my strategy. I came online around 2001 and I started selling my first online products in 2004 and giving away free content was how I basically nurtured my first list of buyers. When I launched my first digital product, I, I sent out one email and I made about 1600 pounds. That's maybe two, two and a half thousand dollars just from one email. And it was because I'd nurtured a list of buyers before I made my offer. So I'm very passionate about free content to attract buyers, to nurture buyers, to create relationships. But it's so important that you do it the right way. Since then, um, I've grown my own content marketing exp expertise into a multi-million dollar empire. And now I work with coaches and consultants, helping them to get clients and make money using a number of strategies and content marketing is a key part of it. So that's why we're focusing on that today. So I want to, with no further ado, dive right in to the seven steps that you need to know about if you are committed to having content that works um, in your business. So the first one is the concept of the right message in front of the right audience at the right time. The bottom line is this, your next paying client is online right now. They're already online. They're already looking for um, the solutions you provide. They might not know that they're looking for you, but they're looking for help with something. They're literally just a few clicks away from you, <laughs> which is inspiring, exciting. But knowing where to find them and what you need to say to them depends on what stage of the buying process they're at. 
Because that person might be at the stage where they have no idea that you exist. They don't know anything about you and you have like zero credibility. They might not even know enough about their problem to know that they should be looking for you. So they've got no idea. Um, the next stage of the buying process is when someone is like they're curious and they, they'd like to know more. So they, they, they know that they, um, they, they've identified the challenge that they're dealing with and they're starting to look for potential answers. The next person is the person that um, maybe has landed on the solution that they, they need. And um, then they now they want to find out more about it. They want to learn more. So they've moved away from the focusing on the problem to focusing on the solution and how a particular solution might work for them. And then um, the next stage is someone who is like, well, yep, this looks like the right thing. I've got some final questions or concerns before I'm in. And then the final stage is that that person is now a paying client or customer. So those are the stages in the journey from someone going from, I have no idea that you exist to, okay, I am now your next, uh, you know, I'm now your latest paying client, not even your next paying client. They're now your latest paying client. Okay. Those are the stages of the journey. Now, you don't need to be Einstein to understand that therefore the, the message that's relevant at each stage of the journey will depend on what stage they're at. So this is really important when it comes to free content. A lot of people, a mistake they make with free content is they're treating all of their potential audience as though they're exactly the same and they're not. So someone who already knows, like, and trusts you and maybe has been lurking around your community or lurking around your world for a while, they might just need um, one or two objections overcome in order to become your next paying client. Whereas someone who has no idea that you exist and they actually haven't even defined the, the challenge they have that means that they, they should be hiring you or working with you, they need more education about their situation and like why they should be paying attention to you. Does that make sense? So the first part with um, having a successful content marketing strategy is making sure that you're lining up the right message to the right person at the right time. So you have to figure out for each stage of the buying process, what is the message that will you move your potential client onto the next stage of the process? So the message for, for a complete stranger who has no idea about you and maybe no idea why they should be hiring someone like you is going to be totally different than the message that goes to someone who um, has some familiarity with you. Maybe has even seen your offer, has checked your offer out, but they just have one or two final questions that would help them to move to the stage of becoming a buyer. So it's so important to make sure that you've mapped out the stages of the buying process, and then you mapped out the message that, that your potential buyer needs at each stage of that process in order to move them to the next step. So that's key, that's point number one. The next thing, to make sure those messages are relevant, is so important to understand what people really, really want. You know, fundamentally, this is the heart of selling. This is the heart of being successful in business. It really is as simple as understanding what people want and giving it to them and giving it to them in a way that what they invest for that thing is, is less than the greater payoff than they're getting from that thing. So they're, they're paying either for a problem to be solved or to achieve a result. Everything you've ever bought, that's why you're doing it. Whether we're talking about coaching or a light bulb or um, a meal, anything you ever buy, you're, you're buying it either to solve a problem or achieve an, an outcome. And so you want to get specific about what is the language that your um, prospects are using to describe their situation? Like what is the language they're using to uh, when they start to think about um, the potential solutions or, you know, the problems that they want to solve? And the best way to do this is what I call social listening, because the, the great thing is, especially online, is someone has already assembled your potential buyers. So on Facebook, often your buyers buyers will exist uh, will exist in a Facebook group, or it may be there's a community. It may could be an offline community, like a, a group of people that meets in person. It could be a bunch of readers who um, read a certain magazine or um, newsletter, etc. But you, basically, someone has already assembled your audience, and so when you figure out where your audience is already hanging out online, you can go to those places, not to go, ah, I'm here you know, like a, a genie jumping out of a lamp, but really to just look 
and listen and, and get curious about how they are describing their current circumstances themselves. And that's a really important part because what it means is then when you start to put out your free content, then you are actually offering things that people truly want. Don't think when because your content is free that magically people are going to go, oh, yes, please. Um, there was an experiment done in Hyde Park a couple of decades ago where they actually had someone standing in the corner of the park ha handing out legal five pound notes. And as people were passing by, they were kind of brushing away the five pound notes because they just assumed because it was being offered that it was something they didn't want. So that's pretty much the knee jerk resistance that you're dealing with when you're offering anything online. And so you, the more that you can make sure that, that you're offering something that people are already looking for, the easier it's going to be to get their attention in the first place. So understanding what people want, it's important for, for making sales, obviously, but even to attract someone's um, interest in the first place, it's really important to know what they want. So the, the step for this is to figure out where your potential buyers are, go do some social listening, get involved in conversations that are already happening. And basically like, don't try and start making offers, just like really pay attention to how people are talking about their situation and their desired results. Okay, step number three is to focus on one key piece of content per week. I know that might sound um, that might sound surprising because these days you see so much, you know, in Facebook feeds, you see people putting out content all day long, posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram, Instagram, maybe YouTube, maybe on LinkedIn. Um, you know, many people, one of their biggest challenges they have with content marketing is it just feels like the content marketing machine is this hungry beast that just needs feed, feeding all the time. Well, I love to simplify things and, and you don't want to do spray and pray marketing where you're just churning out content just almost like with no thought. I want you to get very strategic and deliberate about how you're using free content. And the way to do that is to focus on one key piece of content per week that really adds value. So instead of trying to be in lots of different places at lots, lots of different times, just to pick out one piece, piece, piece of content that's easy and sustainable for you to produce week after week. Now, this is the point where people say to me, well, what should I be doing? Should I be putting out a video? Should I be putting out a blog post? Should I be putting out a podcast? Should I be doing Facebook Lives? Here's what I'm going to say to you. The, the, the type that you choose, what's more important is, is that it suits you. So it's a bit like exercise. You know, if you go to a, any any uh, personal trainer and ask them what exercise should I be doing, most of them will say to you, the exercise that you should choose is the one that's going to be easiest for you to do consistently. And it's the same answer when it comes to content creation. So one of my clients, Byla, she um, is a, a former journalist. So unsurprisingly, writing articles comes really easy to her. Like she's got years of training and doing that. So for her, it makes perfect sense to write a blog post. I have another client who's absolutely fantastic on video. She's very charismatic, very attractive, and video really suits her. Other people um, just prefer audio. And so podcast is a, is a, a great thing to, to do there. So it's to figure out what is a, um, a type of content, a content type, a medium, that you would have fun doing, that you would enjoy, and just pick that one. And instead of spreading yourself thin over lots of different platforms or different types of media, you just pick one and you commit to that. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can have a multi six-figure business. Would I even say seven-figure? Definitely six-figure business with one key piece of content a week. I know that because I did that, and I've had clients do that, and you can do it too. So you don't have to be all over the place. It's far better to have one key piece of content that really serves an audience and add value. Now, another thing I want to mention to you at this point is that one key piece of content, I like to go for dual purpose. So you remember I said earlier that your audience, your potential audience are at different stages of the buying journey. So in my key piece of content that goes out every week, I make sure that I'm having content that both will attract potential new people. And I also have content that enables me to continue a relationship with people who've already raised their hands, people on my email list. So I get one piece of content and it works in both environments to encourage people to take the next step. So that's step number three. Okay, step number four 
is to follow a proven content template that converts. So you don't want to just turn up and, you know, press record or, or, or press go live and just start rambling, all right? There's, there's no purpose to that. That's not actually adding value to you or your potential audience. What you want to do is follow a formula for education-based marketing. So this is education that helps people to make buying decisions because you've structured it in that way. And the formula to follow is why, what, and next steps. So the first thing you should be doing before you uh, put any piece of content in front of anyone is to talk to them about why they should be doing this particular thing. So, um, you know, if, if you have a solution that um, helps women lose weight, let's say by following intermittent fasting, then you should spend a great proportion of your content time educating them about why intermittent fasting is so powerful com compared to other methods that they might have tried or other methods that they could try. Don't assume because it's obvious to you, it's going to be obvious to everyone. It isn't. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make with free content is that they, they just do not spend enough time educating um, their potential audience on why they should be paying attention to this thing. I remember years ago, um, I had a program which helped people to fill their live events. Um, I had had a lot of success successes um, promoting live events and actually generating long-term clients from the live events, but just promoting live events, I, I knew how to fill the room. And so I started offering out, um, you know, my, my courses and I was getting some people to sign up and, and it wasn't like, I wasn't breaking records. And then I put out one email and in this email, the email was like the nine, th the nine reasons you should be running live events. And I went through and I listed out nine different reasons and nine different things that had occurred in my business when I added live events. That email went out and my, my next live event sold out that same day. I didn't even have a sales page for it. Basically, like people bought from the email. But it was because the email had done a really good job of explaining to them why they should be doing this thing. So once they were they understood the, the reasons that they should be doing it, making the sale became really easy. It was a simple case of going, well, this is what I've got. And so that's, if you're not doing um, a lot of education of pe why people should be doing things, it will translate into indifference, um, not right now. It's like, it's literally not a priority because you haven't explained to people why this is a priority, why this is something they should be paying attention to. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to explain to them why they should be uh, paying attention to this particular thing. The next thing is you want to do the what. And this is where you give value. So you give them an outline. You give them the steps. You, sh you, sh you give them the overview of what to do without necessarily going into the specific step-by-step -step how. And then finally, you want to complete every piece of content with a next step. So before you write a word of your content, if it's a blog post, or before you go live, if you're doing a Facebook Live or a podcast or a video, whatever it is, what you want to do is you want to think about, remember we talked about the message to market match? Who is this for? What do I want them to do? What action do I want them to take at the end of this? And sometimes it might not even be an action. You might want them to feel something. You might want them to feel inspired. Or you might want them to go and download something. You might want them to watch another video. So you have to think about what is the next step that I want to direct them to. And then at the end of that content, you want to give them a really, really clear direction to the next steps and repeat it if necessary. So that is the content template um, to, to follow. And if you follow that template, it doesn't matter where you're sharing your content, whether it's an article, video, podcast, that content uh, template will move people onto the next step. Now, step number five is you want to repurpose and distribute. So I shared in step three that you could have one piece of content and basically that, that one piece of content could be at the heart of your content, um, your client converting content machine. One piece of content, however, let's say it's a Facebook Live. You go live and you um, email your list to, to let them know that you're going live. That's one piece of content, but you you have potential buyers in lots of other places. So instead of wearing yourself out, trying to create lots of content for all of those other places, what you can do is you can take that one key piece of content and you can repurpose it in different ways. So for example, many of the blog posts that appear on my blog, on my website, 
are basically created as a result of transcripts from Facebook Lives that I do. I personally, I find video quite easy. So I do a lot of video, I do a lot of Facebook Live, and we have uh, people on my team who will take those Facebook Lives, get them transcribed, turn them into articles, and so it means I've got content going out in other places that I haven't had to be hands-on in creating. From those pieces of content, we can create one-liners, truth bombs, quotes. There's lots of ways for that content to be repurposed. And we also then use um, automation software to make sure that that gets distributed at the right time. What that means for me is that I really have to only focus on my one piece of content every week. And then I have a team and systems that take care of that one, that, that one piece of content and distribute it in other ways. Now, when I say team and systems, often people get scared by that and they think, oh my goodness, that means it's for a really big business, it's not for me. That's not the case at all. Like even if you don't have a, an assistant with you, you can use automation to speed up a lot of these processes. So don't don't rule out that you're ready um, for this, um, you know, because you think, well, I'm not at the stage of having a team yet. This is about smart use of systems. I say systems stands for save yourself time, energy, and money. And it's just a great way to take one piece of content and repurpose it. Now, not only can you take a piece of content and then you can repurpose it into different forms, you can take content that you've published previously and just like, you know, give it a little uh, freshen up and use it again. So I'm gonna share with you, I feel like I have to learn my voice for this. I'm gonna share with you, I've got content in my sort of content machine right now that is based on content that was first created in 2009. <laughs> Some of you have kids that weren't even around then. Um, but literally that is content, but it worked and it helped move people to the next step. So why constantly reinvent the wheel? It's like you can repurpose content by paying attention to what has worked and using it again, either in a different format or you know a freshened up version um, repurposed. Now, this next step, step number six, this is for many people the missing link. I, I think, um, I, I seen inside a lot of um, multi-million online empires and um, from the outside, it appears that these sales are being racked up um, on autopilot. So people are going to web pages and ordering from web pages. And what you might not see is just how much high touch is happening behind the, script, the scenes. So step number six is all about how you turn the interest that your content is generating into buyers and the way to do that is through some personal interaction i call this engaging the engagers so so many people miss this step and yet it is the crucial piece for turning that interest into paying business because your content can take people so far but your content is not a salesperson it wasn't designed to be you know it's it's there to um educate to attract attention, to educate people why, to talk to them about the mistakes. You can add a lot of value with the content, but the content by itself isn't gonna say, hey, would you like to join? Would you like to buy? <laughs> here's your next, you know, here's the content can say here's the next step, but the content isn't actually going to overcome the specific objections for that particular person. Any questions? Do you have any questions? anything you need to know in order to make this an easy yes for you. So this is where you personally engage with the people who've been engaging with your content. Now, I'm not talking about cold calling. I'm not talking about um, spamming people. I'm not talking about any, any of that. Bottom line is when you're paying attention, if you're putting content out consistently and you're paying attention to how people are responding to that content, you can literally see your next buyer as though, you know, if it was a crowd, it's like someone just put a spotlight on them. It becomes really obvious because you can see through their, their frequency and how much they're interacting with the content you're putting out, they're, they're, they're ready for the next step. And if all you do is start to spot those people and, and connect with them so you can nudge them into the next step, then you could transform your business. In my business, we call this low hanging fruit. It's like the people who are almost ready to buy and they literally just need a helping hand to, to bring them to the next stage of the process. Now, if you are putting out content and you're um, putting out content left, right and center, but you're not attending 
to that little piece. It's the equivalent of like growing fruit in an orchard, you know, growing apple trees and then not bothering to go out and either pick the apple off the tree or, or pick the apple off the ground once it's fallen from the tree. It's like you're doing all of that work, and but you're doing everything but actually harvest the ripe fruit. So, so must be um, getting time to eat because um, I'm obviously going for my food metaphors today. But that's basically what's happening. So if you're in the category of like, well, Bernadette, I've been putting out all this content, but no one's buying. Could I have just pinpointed the reason that you haven't been turning that content content into to buyers? That's just, just that little bit of F, extra effort at the end could make all of the difference. So I call that engaging the engagers. And then step seven, um, and which is a great thing to do with anything you do in business, is metrics and analytics. And this is where you actually look at what results are you getting from your free content? So how are people responding? How many people are clicking the link? How many people are watching the video? How far in the video are they watching if video is your thing? How many people are taking the call to action at the end and moving to the next step? So you, you get to really know your numbers. And this is when your content stops being just spray and pray. You're just frantically putting stuff out there and hoping that eventually you'll attract a buyer with it and actually becomes something that's very strategic and deliberate and you know what you're doing. And this also means like looking at how many people having, have even consumed your content. So I um, had a client who was putting out content and getting fantastic engagement, but she was demoralized because she wasn't making enough sales from her business. And then I pointed out to her that her audience, the people that were consuming her content was tiny. And if all we did was increase her audience size by five or 10 times, then we were gonna be able to increase her sales by five or 10 times. Now, without that input from me, she would have just gone and you know abandoned that content and gone over to a different place and tried to do something different in a different place. She didn't need to change what she was doing. She just needed to amplify the audience. She needed more people to see what she was doing. So again, it, you need to look at your numbers and see what's actually happening. What, how many people are you reaching? What's the engagement you're getting from the people that you're reaching? Is it translating into sales results for you? Because knowing the answers to those questions it's what is what's going to help you to um, to optimize, continue to optimize what you do so you're attracting more and more more and more buyers. So there we have it, the seven steps to content that converts. And if you take anything from um, this training today, I just want to leave you with this one key thought in your mind. It doesn't matter what stage of business you're at, whether you're brand new to attracting clients or whether you've been doing this for years, you can within 30 days, put together um, a, a content marketing strategy that you start to execute that can get results. So you can use content to find your next buyers. And the beauty is when you do this right, it's like that content is out there working for you while you're sleeping. And so that's why you then end up with a result where you know you, you, you log on and you see in your direct messages that someone's reached out to you and says, hey, can we talk? I'd like to know more. And the reason I have so much certainty about this is this happens all the time in my business. And I've already helped tens of hundreds of clients to achieve the same result too. So let's just do a recap of the seven steps. So step number one is it's all about getting the right message in front of the right audience at the right time. Step number two is you need to make sure that you do know what they want so you can give them what they want. Step number three is just focus on one piece of key piece of content per week that is that you can commit to and that you can be consistent. Step number four is follow a proven content template. And I've given you an outline of the template to follow. Step number five is repurpose and redistribute. Step number six is that missing link that turns content into buyers. And it's actually to spot, to get to, to learn how to spot your next potential client and then how to reach out to them in a very um, low key informal way to help like nudge the sale forward. And then step number seven is continually optimize the process through tracking the right metrics. So now I've given you this content um, strategy, these seven steps, you've got two options. You can either take what I've given you, go away and, and apply it and put it into action, or, and this is the smarter choice I believe, you can work with me personally and I will help you create and execute your content marketing strategy that converts. 
So here's how we're gonna do that. I'm not gonna waste any time figuring out what to do. You will be spending your precious time on executing the strategy. So you'll know what your one piece of content is gonna be. You'll have made the decisions about that. You'll, you'll be ready to, to go. You'll have committed to and started a sustainable creation and posting schedule so that you're showing up in front of your potential audience regularly and sharing content. So this will be something that you're gonna be able to action. Even if you get through a busy spell and you get very busy with delivery, I see this happen a lot, that people, they're putting content out and then they get very busy with working with clients, content falls through by the wayside and they've lost all of that momentum that they were building. So putting out con content consistently is really, really important. And I'm gonna show you how to organize yourself to make that happen, even if um, you're getting really busy. You'll understand what needs to be included in your content to achieve your desired result. So whether you are looking to get someone's attention, whether you're looking to get them to engage with you to find out more, whether you're looking to generate a lead, you want them to raise their hand and maybe sign up for um, a webinar that you're offering or download a free report that you've created, whether it's conversion, you will know exactly what you need to do in your content to achieve that result. You will have complete clarity about where, when, and why you're posting. So there's not gonna be any more spray and pray. You'll know why you're putting certain things in certain places. You'll know what needs to be in that to move your potential audience onto the next step relative to the stage of the buying journey that they're at. Posting content will no longer be a time suck that you know leaves you feeling guilty because you're not doing it or resentful because you are doing it but no one's buying or uncertain because you've got no clear plan of what you are posting or when or all the uh, combination of guilty, resentful and uncertain. Um, and the end result of all of this is you getting inbound messages from people who are pre-sold. Like they're gonna come to you and say, I want to work with you. And that's because the, your content has done all of the heavy lifting to bring them to that point of being ready to buy. So you're not gonna have to be expending a lot of energy on convincing people. It's more like you're gonna be connecting people who are already convinced because your content that you put out brought them to that point. That is the power of content marketing. So here's how we're gonna do it. One, we're gonna map out the stages of your buying journey so we can map the message. So you can figure out where your potential buyer is at each stage of the journey and get clear on the messages that they specifically need to see. So that's specific to that audience and specific to your business. This is not one size fits all. I'm gonna give you a, a, a formula and we are going to fill in the gaps for, for your audience. And by the way, this isn't, um, these aren't trainings where you're on like a, a, with hundreds of other people. This is gonna be a small group of people working with, with, with me. Well, you're gonna figure out what they want because this is at the heart of selling is really understanding what people want to buy and, and using the right language, the right words to describe their problem and describe the solution so that people are able to say, uh -huh, oh, that's me, yeah, I want that. We're going to make decisions. <laughs> One of the things that really slows people down with implementing is analysis paralysis. Is like being so worried about making the wrong decision that you don't make any decision. And so I want you to get really clear on like what is your key piece of content gonna be? Is it gonna be a newsletter by email? Is it gonna be a blog post? Is it gonna be a YouTube video? Is it gonna be a Facebook Live? Is it gonna be a podcast? What is it gonna be? So you can commit to that and you can start to put that into, into action. I'm gonna give you content templates. So I gave you like the overview of a content template in this training, but I am actually gonna go further than that. I'm gonna give you actual examples of my own highest converting content. And I'm gonna show you how they work on blog posts, video, podcasts, and webinars. Do you remember that email that I told you about where I showed the nine reasons why people should, um, why they should be doing live events? and that led to my live event selling out, that's included in the content I'm sharing with you. So you're gonna to have tons and tons of examples and templates, and I'm gonna dissect them for you so you understand. It's not like you're just following the template, you actually understand why each piece, why it works so well. So you'll also have the chance to submit your own outlines following those templates, and I'll review them with you personally and give you feedback and help you tweak them so you've really got content that's ready to convert. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. 
I'm gonna show you the systems that I use in my business for repurposing content. I have, I have content going out all day, every day across a range of platforms, but I'm only really doing one piece of content every week. And after that, it's hands off for me. I love this. I love being able to add that much value to so many people without me having to be the mule and do all the hard work to share that magic. I wanna show you how you can do it too. So even if you don't have an assistant yet, it's never too early to start thinking about how you can utilize systems in your business to save yourself time, energy, and money, how you can leverage systems so that you can reach a bigger audience. Do you remember our formula? That the formula for making money is to add value, add more value to more people more often. You can add more value by getting, by getting really clear on one piece of content that really adds value rather than just randomly you know, shedding tips. But you have to make sure that content is reaching your audience. So if you wanna reach more people, you're gonna to need to use systems to use that. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of my systems. Now, we're also gonna engage the engagers. So you remember I told you earlier about that missing piece that so many people skip where it's like you've, you've, you've done all the hard work of planting the seeds and, and watering the trees, and now you've got an orchard full of apples, but you're just missing that final step of going and picking the apples that are ready to fall off the branches, going out with your basket and, and, and letting the apples fall into the basket. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in a way that's authentic, it's not, it's not sleazy, it's like people are gonna be pleased to hear from you because you've already built up all of that um, author that credibility and relationship with them to get to that point. So I'm gonna show you how to spot your next buyer in the crowd so that when you are doing those reach outs, you know exactly where to go. So think again, our orchard analogy, imagine being able to look at a tree and going, that's the apple that's ready to fall, fall off. And so I'm just gonna pluck that apple as opposed to you know, trying to tug unripened apples off the tree. One is hard work, one is easy. And when you know how to spot the ripe fruit, then you're, you're gonna know how to, get, uh, how to get results in less time with less effort. And finally, we're gonna be looking at the metrics and, 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 metrics and analytics. I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what numbers to look for, how to evaluate how a piece of content is doing, how you can do more of the content that's working, how you can scale back maybe the messages that aren't landing with your audience. And so this is how you will continually optimize your content so that it attracts buyers for you. So if you wanna join us, here's where you go now. You go to www.bernadettedoyle.com forward slash get clients. Um, but either way, you're gonna get all of the, um, the benefits that I shared in, the, in this training to help you create content that converts and attracts your clients. So what you'll do is you'll tell me what you want people to do at the end of your content, you know, do you want them to download your lead magnet? Do you want them to book a call with you? Do you want them to buy your program? You tell me what the outcome is and I will literally outline that for you, whether that's gonna be a blog, a video, Facebook Live, podcast, whatever it is, I'll show the outline to get people to take action. Sounds cool? So where you need to go now is go to bernadettedoyle.com forward slash get clients. That's where you can join Get Clients Make Money. You will have the clarity that you've got the um, a content marketing strategy that's working for you. You'll know exactly what you need to be producing when. So you'll know exactly when you are creating your content. You'll know what your distribution schedule is so that you'll, um, you, you know where you're um, putting your content and when and why you're doing it. And it will be a system that you can continue to implement without it sucking up hours of your time so that you can focus your time on serving the clients that really want to work with you. So I hope I've inspired you. I hope I've shown you that um, creating content that converts doesn't have to be overwhelming. Um, there's a right way to do it. If you follow these seven steps, um, you absolutely will create um, content that converts. And I do hope that you'll be joining me inside of Get Clients Make Money and really make sure that you're attracting the clients that wanna be working with you. Because your ideal client, your next client is already online and they are just a few a few clicks away. Perhaps there's someone you'll know, you know, perhaps they're a complete stranger to you at this point of time. But when you know the right message to get in front of them, whatever stage they're at, and invite them to take the next step, Getting clients through creating content becomes easy. It's no longer like pushing water uphill. It literally is a case of, of having the content that draws people in. 
So I'm excited about what it's done for my business and I really want to help you to implement this in your business too. So I do hope you'll be joining me and get clients to make money. Um, the link one more time is www.bernadettedoyle.com forward slash get clients. Um, as always, leave any comments you have about this below. I always love to connect with you, hear how this training has impacted you and I'll see you next time. Take care.